What is going on everybody? I am Mike, welcome back to Tech 24 Seven TV. I'm so glad that you're back with me today because we're talking about how iPadOS 15 accelerates your productivity, no matter if you're a productivity ninja or if you are a Padawan. We got a lot of great features that will take your game to the next level. Let's get started. Now, before we get in the video, folks, YouTube tells me that almost 90% of you that are watching this video aren't subscribed to the channel. So that's kind of a shame because I love my iPad, I love making iPad content, and I'm pretty sure that you wanna see that content regularly. Let's make it official like a referee with a whistle. Consider hitting subscribe, turning on notifications because you don't wanna miss what I have coming out, including my full review of iOS and iPadOS 15 when Apple releases this fall. And if you aren't subscribed, let me know what is actually holding you back down in the comments below. Now I've broken this video down into several different sections. You'll find timestamps to each of the sections pinned in the first comment below so you can easily navigate back and forth between the different sections or if you wanna share a section with someone that might enjoy it. Now the first thing that we're gonna talk about are the changes to the home screen and widgets because it is surely gonna be the first thing that you notice after you're done upgrading. Now iPadOS 15 enables widgets that can place anywhere on any of the home screens, not just the today view like we've seen in iOS 13 and iOS 14. Now the unintended consequence of this change is that you're gonna get slightly less than the number of apps in iPadOS 15 per page that you are getting in iPadOS 14. And that's due to the increased padding around the actual widgets themselves that obviously can be placed anywhere. Now those widgets here, they can be in any number of sizes. There's actually four sizes now, including a brand new extra large widget type that actually takes advantage of the large screen that the iPad brings to the table. In addition to widgets that can be placed anywhere on any of the screens on your iPad, there's the inclusion of the app library, which is the same paradigm, if you're familiar with it, on the iPhone. So I'm not gonna get into a lot of detail on how the app library works. In iPadOS 15, you can have any number of home screens with app and widgets on them. Now you can hide home screens just like you can on your iPhone today, and those home screens can actually can be shown or visible to you depending on your focus modes. Now I'm gonna get into focus modes a little bit later on, so stay tuned for that. One of the things that I find very helpful in terms of productivity is what I would call dynamic app positioning. And Apple did not talk about this on stage, but it's something that I found in the iPadOS beta. Now you can have an app that is in a specific location while in landscape mode, and while you rotate your iPad to portrait mode, that app is in a completely different position. So let's just say here that I'm looking at the Apple TV app, which is in the bottom left-hand corner of my iPad while connected to my keyboard. If I were to flip my iPad around into portrait mode, that app can be positioned in a different location, allowing easier access to it while I'm holding the iPad. And that's really gonna help out if you're someone who's using your iPad or switching your iPad from portrait to landscape mode, and you want better reachability with your thumbs when trying to interact with that specific app. That and the same exact dynamic positioning applies to not just widgets, but apps on specific screens as well. One of my favorite features coming to both the iPad and the iPhone this year is going to be dynamic text sizing that work on a per app basis. Now, maybe you are like me where you have the text size set system wide to the smallest possible font, but you really don't want to admit to yourself it's kind of hard to read sometimes. Well, here with this new feature, it is an accessibility feature that you can turn this on and you can go into apps and set the text size per app. So the app no longer has to worry about supporting dynamic text size. It's all handled and enforced at the OS level, which is great because you can pick and choose which apps have the smallest font and which ones do not. I think it's just a nice addition. It does help from a readability perspective and from a density perspective, you can fit more things on the page itself, depending on which app you're interacting with. Now, the quickest way to do this is gonna to be to enable it inside of Control Center. So once enabled, open Control Center, tap the text sizing widget, take the scroll bar, instead of saying globally, you're gonna do it for the per app name that you have there and then change it, it's actually very simple. It works great, it does help me maintain readability for a lot of different apps and content that I have inside my iPad. Staying focused is significantly easier in iPadOS 15 thanks to the introduction of focus modes. If you're unfamiliar with what focus modes are, you could think of this as a cross-platform mindset allowing you to sync your intentions with your device. Now, focus modes allow you to easily enter either lean forward or lean back context. They sync across all your devices as long as they're running the latest version of software. Do you not want to be disturbed while playing your favorite game? There's a focus mode for that. Do you need to hammer out a proposal without worrying about Twitter? There's a focus mode for that. Need to make a video call for work? Well, there is a focus mode for that too. Focus modes use on-device intelligence. They use location, time of day, and other signals to automatically enable or disable focus modes. 
For example, whenever I open up PS Remote Play or connect my DualSense controller, my gaming focus mode is enabled. My planning focus mode is enabled automatically every day from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Now, once you upgrade to iPadOS, there are several focus modes created out of the box that are available by default, and this is where the customization starts. You can specify which apps break your focus mode, which contacts are allowed to contact you, and even which home screens are available in a specific focus mode. Now, I have an in-depth video coming soon on how I use focus modes, how I have them set up, so if you wanna see that, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on so you can be the first to watch that when it comes out. The next set of iPadOS features are to be aimed towards individuals who are using Photos app to manage their growing collection of photos and videos. Now, I don't know about you, I have about 25,000 photos and about 2,000 videos, so it's certainly hard to find the gems of the photos I want to have in my library because it's littered with a lot of things that I don't necessarily need all the time. Now, new in photos, there are going to be four different kind of core functions, search, modify, live text, and share. So in terms of search, now in iPadOS 15 with photos, you can search for photos using the app that actually was able to save the photo. Now, I don't know about you, but I have many different camera apps, many different cameras that I actually use to take photos with, and I can actually search by either app name, or I can search by camera name, or I can search by camera type, meaning I can type in Backdrops, which is the name of the app that I use for all my wallpapers that I have, or I can search by my camera name. I could say iPhone 12 Pro. I could say iPhone 11. I could say, show me all the photos taken with the Moment app. And that metadata, if it was saved in the photo, is now searchable and indexable by photos. In addition, you could actually search for photo information inside of Spotlight. So you could pull down the Spotlight, type in some information. You could say type in lake, and then you're going to see the search results there in Spotlight as well. The next feature is going to benefit people who are using the Messages app to share photos. Now, I can't tell you how many times someone sent me a photo and I forgot to save it to my library. Each time you receive a photo in the Messages app, Photos creates a placeholder in your library. That placeholder is going to include the photo itself, who sent it, an icon to identify it, and all the accompanying metadata. If you want to save it to your library, there is a button at the bottom that says Save to Library, and voila, you are done. That photo is in your library. On top of that, you can actually click on the person's name and respond to that message in line with the photo. Additionally, what happens when someone sends you a bunch of photos, you can thumb through those photos very easily without being taken out of context of the message itself. And it's very easy to add your reaction to the photo. Again, all done in the bottom of that photo message. Now, the next feature is something that Apple demonstrated on stage, which is going to be live text. Live text uses on-device machine learning to take text that's found in photos and translate it into computer-readable text. That means that you would take a text from an image, copy it, and paste it into a Word document, a notes document, a message field, just about anywhere in the operating system, which means live text can identify phone numbers, and then you can take actions on that phone numbers that you find. So if you have a phone number in a picture, you can tap on it and then place a call from that text. This feature is only working on photographs at the moment, meaning it does not work with videos. Hopefully that is a feature that's gonna be somewhere in the near future, because that would be great as well. And to top it all off, you can use Spotlight to search for that machine readable text, and it's gonna appear in the search results. The next feature is gonna be updating metadata associated with photos. This means that you can update your photo library, the people that are in your library, you can update the EXIF data, which includes the location and the date and time. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, it was always a huge pain to go to my computer and update photos that might be tagged with the wrong people. And I almost often forgot, I was really never at my computer that often. And as I moved away from using a computer as my primary machine to using my iPad, I really felt that this feature was missing and I'm glad that they're bringing it to iPad OS. Being productive on your iPad would be so much harder if you didn't have the ability to multitask. Well, luckily for people like you and me who want to multitask on their iPad, Apple is making it so much easier this year by introducing several new notable features in iPad OS 15. First, iPadOS 15 introduces a new multitasking menu enabling to quickly enter split screen, slide over, or even full screen mode using two apps. The three ellipses at the center of your screen mark the new multitasking menu. Now, once you tap it, three different glyphs appear representing the new multitasking options. Once selected, the foreground apps slide out of the way to let you choose the app for multitasking. You can choose an app from the app library, dock, from the app switcher, or from one of your home screens. Additionally, there is a fourth multitasking option that is enabled for apps like Mail, Messages, and Notes, which brings your content center screen and allows you to focus on that. I like this one. This is probably one of my favorite multitasking modes. I do hope that the Spark email app, which is the one that I use, adopts this in iPadOS 15 when they launch their new app. 
Next is the multi-window shelf, which enables you to access all open instances for an app. Once you open the app, you'll see the shelf here on the bottom of the page, like you see in messages most often, and allows you to go ahead and switch between any of the open instances or any of the open windows that you have for a given app. The app switcher has been updated to include slide over apps, which is actually very nice, but you still have the ability to just look at slide over apps by swiping up on an app that you have open and slide over, and then if you wanted to, you can close it or switch between them. Now, when you combine the new multitasking menu itself, the shelf, the improved app switcher, and the fact that you can multitask with any app by finding it anywhere, is such a huge improvement for multitasking in iPadOS, they really are going to add substantive improvements in the quality of work and allowing you to do your best work on your iPad. Now, if you're even somewhat familiar with the channel, you know that I am a big lover of keyboards and I have been talking about keyboards for a long time. Now that is because the keyboard is an essential part of productivity on the iPad. Apple's making significant updates to external keyboard support in iPadOS 15 to enable you to do more meaningful types of work on your iPad. Apple redesigned the keyboard shortcuts bar and relocated to the bottom of the screen in a new compact UI. Apple introduced keyboard shortcuts in iPadOS 13 and the initial implementation was a little kludgy if you ask me. The current implementation has the shortcut window in the center of the screen obscuring your content and I feel it takes you out of context of working on your content. That in addition to iPadOS 13 didn't categorize or break down the shortcuts nor were they laid out intuitively but thankfully iPadOS 15 fixes both of those problems. Now keyboard shortcuts follow a similar format to the Mac and are categorized by file, edit, format, view, and search. You can still activate the keyboard shortcut bar by holding down the command key for a brief moment and then you navigate the shortcut bar by pressing the keyboard shortcut or by using the full navigation keyboard with the arrow keys. Now on top of that, iPadOS 15 has a new global modifier function that you can get to by holding down the globe key on your keyboard. Now the global modifier is going to contain another set of powerful shortcuts and they're available anywhere throughout the operating system. Last but certainly not least are the updates coming to notes as part of iPadOS 15. Now there are a lot of updates and like I mentioned before in the beginning, I do have a separate video coming, but I'm going to go over my favorite updates. So first and foremost is the quick note widget. So you can swipe up from the bottom right hand corner anywhere in the operating system with your finger, with the Apple Pencil and pull up quick notes. This is ability for you to use the notes application to quickly quick notes take notes inside of that. Now, once you use the Quick Note application, inside of the actual notes application, Quick Notes are organized in its own folder, so they're very easy to find. Second is that notes are now contextual. You can add hashtags, cooking, family, you know, vacation, whatever the case is, and you can then organize your hashtags in the new tag browsing window. Third thing is that now you can share notes with other people. That was something that they introduced last year but you can also now collaborate with them. You can mention people if you want to get changes done. When you make changes in a shared note, it does keep track of that. So it's almost like to track changes. And then that in addition to, you can now add pictures in notes where you can have handwritten and pictures in the same note. Previously, that was not something that was supported in notes. Now, those are my favorite features coming to notes in iPadOS 15. Uh, I would like to use it more, and I think these are going to be the features that propel me into using it more. I think Notes is really going to come out of its shell, so to speak, in iPadOS 15. iPadOS 15 features many, many different productivity features that I think you are really going to be in place to do your best work yet on your iPad, and I really hope that you were able to glean something from this video that you're going to be able to implement in your workflows. As I mentioned before, I do have a few videos coming up for focus modes and for notes, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications if you want to be alerted when that content drops. Now, I love hearing from you, whether it's down in the comments below or on Twitter, where I get super nerdy about the iPad and iPadOS. I am Mike. This is Tech 24 7 TV. Folks, I will talk to you in the next one.